Good morning. Welcome to this super special mini series on getting this hunk of iron behind me to the Nurburgring. This car behind me is a Vauxhall Amiga MV6, 3 litre V6. It's one of my, and weird I know, but it's one of my dream cars. My mum had one a very, very long time ago. She had like the two litre GLX version. And I always used to see the MV6s and think, oh, one day I'm gonna get one of those. And well, it's behind me. 500 quid I paid for it about 18 months ago. Usually I'd like to do things a little bit quicker. Uh, and I will try and do things a little bit quicker in the future now that I'm filming stuff. But the uh, car has been, how can you put it, um, has been one of the most challenging cars I've ever laid my hands on in my life and it still is and it's still not finished and as it stands now I have seven days before I leave for the Nürburgring because the ferry's booked and the hotel's booked. This car has to be ready. If it's not ready I'm going to be going in the bloody Passat or something, you know, two litre diesel Passat, which I don't want to do. So this car has to be ready. And the reason it's currently in a million pieces on the ramp is that, um, where can I start? There's a lot of reasons. So the main reason is the power steering didn't work properly. Power steering was only at about 60%. And the reason for that, I'm hoping, believe it or not, was the ABS sensor. Sorry, not sensor, ABS brain, ECU and, you know, thing with like pipes coming out all over it. Um, look at that. That's just landed on my foot. Can you see that? That's like a bird. It's gone. Uh, yeah, so the uh, very brief mechanical explanation the car has speed sensitive power steering and it's controlled by a solenoid that moves in and out of the power steering thing as in steering box power steering rack whatever and that is controlled the solenoid is controlled by the car's ecu now the car's ecu needs to know how fast it's going uh, in order to tell that solenoid what to do because the faster it goes the heavier the steering slower it goes like the steering so the uh, car's ECU takes that data from the brakes ECU. And the reason it does that from the ABS ECU is because of the ABS rings. Now the ABS rings are fantastic for telling the car's ECU exactly how fast you're going. It's not gonna work off the mile per hour gauge and the gearbox or whatever, even if it even has that. I don't even think it has that. It might do. Yeah, I think it is mechanical. Um, I don't really know anything, <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's, that, all that has to happen and it's not happening and I think it's not happening because there was something wrong with the ABS ECU, so I took it all out, ball ache of a job, I'll show you where it is in a second, and then I had to put it all back in, which I've done now, and I don't know if it works yet, and I've sort of done a quick sort of fill of fluid and everything, but I'm going to need to bleed it up properly when it's back running. Um, and God, I hope it works, because if it doesn't, that means I'll have done two power steering pumps. I'll have changed every single suspension and steering related item on the car. Uh, I'll have had the rack checked, um, tires changed, uh, everything else to do with the steering, the fuses, relays, wiring, everything. And it must be that. If it's not that, the only thing that I haven't done is the actual solenoid itself. But I kind of know that's working because once upon a time, I did a hot manoeuvre in the car and the power steering started to work for a brief period and it was elations. It was the happiest moment of my life so far, which is a bit sad, isn't it? But uh, yeah, so I'm going to hopefully test that later on. Now, the reason the deadline sort of got a bit close is that while I was doing that, I thought to aid cooling around the Nürburgring, I would replace the air conditioning radiator. Now, I, when I was doing this, I noticed one of the pipes had a big leak in it, a big split. So I sent it off to a firm for them to fix, 
and they haven't done it, which is really annoying. So I can't put it back together. So what I'm planning on doing is running the car to Nürburgring without the air conditioning system attached at all. Now that poses one big issue. Now this is your air conditioning pump and it's absolutely filthy. This has the fluid going in and out here and the fluid also acts as a lubricant. Now my worry is, even though there's a little sort of clutch situation here and that does freewheel, so I'm pretty happy with that, but I'm worried that if something goes wrong with that sort of system in there, while I'm going around the Nürburgring, that this will bind up, it'll spin the pump, and the pump will explode, and then the car will explode, and everybody around me um, will get shrapneled um, by my Amiga falling to pieces at 150 miles an hour. So, great. So, I'm going to try something, which is this. I bought this uh, belt for my waist, and it's a little bit too big, so I'm gonna use it for the auxiliary functions of the car. And apparently this is the right size for a V6 Vauxhall Amiga without air conditioning. So I'm hoping this works, then we don't have to put that back in at all, so the car doesn't stand any chance of running. Super exciting. So I'm gonna get stuck into that, but first, I want to give you a little bit more of a history of how the car came to be, where it is now, what work I've done to it to get from a literal shed that was being used as a shed in a car park full of rust and the engine was in the boot to this behind me to potentially doing 150 mile an hour on the autobahns to potentially going around the Nürburgring in a very respectful time of an, you know, 15, 20 minutes an hour, something like that. Let's get stuck in. So yeah, we picked the car up. It was pretty rough. Been set out for a very long time and everything was in a very bad way. Stuck it on the trailer, took it home back to Tarpley where we got busy. Rob started stripping the car down. Master mechanic Rob, ex Vauxhall, really a huge help on this. Wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have been able to do it without him really. Got the heads off and got them packaged up, ready to go. Took the rocker covers off, made sure everything was marked up so we knew it was all going back. Got busy then, ordering parts, get a load of new stuff delivered in the colder winter and started putting it all back together. The timing on the car was a nightmare. It was a real hard job getting it all timed up properly, but he did an amazing job. And eventually we got it all back together and it ran. <laughs> So yeah, once we had it running, we got stuck into a load of stuff like MOT prep, headlight resto, doing a little bit of electrics, new tyres, new brakes, all new suspension items, lots of welding. Not too bad on the welding, but just lots of little sort of patches and stuff, but did a really nice job of those, so really pleased with it. And they're still there today, which is great news, isn't it? But yeah, everything else went fine, um, and it flew through its MOT. And then it was on to stuff like interior, so replacing worn out buttons, bit of a blown armrest, 
nasty old gear gaiters and handbrake gaiters, worn sort of bolsters, which I managed to do some dyeing on and revitalising, and then a real good sort of serious scrub, new set of car mats, you know, just a real, real intricate detail of the interior, and I think you'll agree it turned out real nice, you know. Yeah, and then it was time to do the outside of the car. So we started stripping it down because there was a lot of bad, rusty arches and just real sort of old paintwork, lots of marks, you know, stone chips, grazes, scuffs. The driver's side rear arch was quite bad, so patched that up, got it all welded in, and yeah, that's still looking good now. And then uh, a lot of paint was dull in places as well on the plastics, like the spoilers and stuff. So gave all that a real good renewal. And it, you know, just made such a huge difference to the car. But it was a, it was quite a big undertaking, you know, in the, just in the workshop there without having any sort of booths or anything. But I got the paint matched really well. Um, I managed to get a really clean sort of finish and, and a little bit of, uh, blowing in here and there just to get it so it didn't sort of stand out different colours of silver everywhere which is always a worry when you're doing silver but yeah it turned out immaculate really couldn't have been happier and yeah a little bit of wet and dry uh, wet and wetting and drying and yeah it just as you can see did the trick right then this is the last set of pictures now i promise i did some dressing the plastics painting of the bottom plastic sills Put my plate on it with the Nürburgring surround. Took the wheels away to be professionally diamond cut and refurbished. Painted the calipers. Repainted the inner arches all round. Gave the car the spit shine of its life. And I think you'll all agree, that is the best looking uh, German saloon car of all time. I don't know, maybe. That's what I think, anyway. Okay, now everything looks like a bit of a mess that we're going to start with today. And the reason for that is because it's a bit of a mess. So, I'm going to put everything back together and then I'm going to give it a good clean under here. Like, for example, the bonnet is a little bit grotty. And the reason it's a little bit grotty is because I took the sound deadening from underneath the bonnet because I wanted to hear uh, this a bit more. Because there's part of me that is a little bit of a... A chav <laughs> and uh, kind of wanted this uh, in my car because it's got a standard exhaust so I wanted it to go bomb which I'm hoping it's gonna do now down there look is where the ABS pump is you can't even see it you can just yeah there you go just there I had to you know god the strife I went through to get that out painful so yeah I'm gonna put this belt back on down here as you can see and then I'm going to build it all back up. And that was the ring kit that I had ready for when my pipe returned, which never returned. So very sad. And yeah, and I've got a few little tiny jobs to sort of sort out. So this is a vacuum line here that um, split. So I've just cut the ends off and to the other side, which is down here. And I'm just going to bridge that with a little bit of other vacuum line that I've got. And then I'm going to, yeah, get it off the ramp, give it a test and then possibly bleed the brakes up a little bit more and then hopefully a great big valet clean preparation oils levels fill the boot with a nice box full of stuff just in case and we are going to be ready to rumble First job is get it up in the air and get its belt back on. Yes. Yeah. First job. I know exactly what I'm doing. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up because it's quite dark in there, but as you can see, it's a little bit easier to root the um, auxiliary belt from underneath just so you can see exactly where it goes. That's where the old air conditioning would have gone. As you can see, everything's uh, I've given everything a liberal application of anti-rust. Right, old belt. Uh, 
Why? Um. Oh. Uh. Hmm. Is that an earth strap? Oh god, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought. Uh. Oh god. Right. Uh. How else can I get this out from there? Any answers on it? Does anybody know? Any anybody got any clues? Because I mean that's like stuck, isn't it? Oh, maybe it's just a. No, probably not. This thing here always leaks as well. I might be able to tighten that up when I'm here. I should probably tighten that up. Because that Jubilee clip moves. That's not good. It shouldn't move, really, should it? Maybe if I just keep pulling it, maybe that'll work. You know, like they do on, you know, videos sometimes. It's just like, ding, ding, and it's done. No. No, that didn't work. I strongly believe you should always follow the path of least resistance when you're doing anything. And I'm pretty confident that this is that path. And I wanted to sort of beef this up anyway, so let's just whip this off and then we can beef it up and then put it all back together afterwards properly once the belt's in place. Look at all this green stuff. I don't think you can see that green stuff there. That is the air conditioning fluid. So a lot of people think air conditioning fluid is a gas, but it's not a gas. It's a liquid. And that liquid has lubricationing in it, which keeps your pump healthy. Because you know what they say, you've got to keep your pump healthy. That's important. Fortunately, it lubricates your hand while you're trying to twist it off. What's that? Why is that on there? I don't know. If you're wondering what this part is as well, uh, so am I. Ow! I keep hitting myself. How come everything I do it just doesn't even work? Please! Everything I touch on this car. <laughs> Always cut towards you, I think, is the saying. Get out of there, you ah, foul beast. I think because there's red hot exhaust gases flying into this constantly, it goes rock hard, almost like plastic. Uh, yeah, not good. Uh, this bit can come off now as well. There you go, goodbye. Right, so I'll have to read her. There is a part for this, like I'm told, but I don't know what that part is. I don't know where you'd like buy that part from. But I have noticed there is a, this shouldn't be moving like this. So I might try and put a bolt on the back of that bracket there just to keep it solid. Because that movement might be why this breaks all the time. Okay, so, belt out. No? That not helped at all. <laughs> Go past it. Okay, so it's there. So if I undo this thing, Whew. why is it all so hard work? Hey, the belt's on. As you can see, the one in the middle. Uh, right, let's do this differently. This one is the new one. This one is the original one. And you can see the new one is a lot smaller. It's all tight in the middle, this one's all baggy. So, we might stand a chance of this working without uh, needing the air conditioning pump. Hopefully. My GoPro is getting so dirty from being inside here, but, you know, sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice everything, sacrifice yourself. Uh, okay, uh, hang on, uh, we'll leave everything undone until I can remember that, 
that should not be that loose. Okay. I might have to use the international unloosening device known as a tie wrap. Uh, okay, so maybe that goes over the top now. No? Yeah? Let's go past there again. So round this big one. Um, and then probably doesn't, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. And then around this bottom one. Uh, what's this? Oh God, that looks, should that be as in the way as it is? Oh God, dangerous. Maybe it has to go, does it have to go through there? Let's unplug that. I don't even know what that is. Some kind of sump sensor, sensors that the car's still got a sump. And that goes like that and that, oh my God, I think this is going to work. Oh, are you in? Are you in? Are you in? No, you're not quite in up there. Oh, I think this is going to work. Mum, look at me now. Right, let me get the adjustment device. Adjust it against this plastic thing here. That'll be fine, won't it? Uh, what else can we adjust? Oh no, I know how to do it. You have to do it with a socket. 14 will that do will you accept this offering of a 14 mil socket you heathen okay 15 mil 15 mil on that socket and then this this thing on it and then yes that's it see did you see it move did you see it move okay Get everything back in position before you do this again. Okay, so that's round there. That's round the bottom. Uh, I wish you'd do this one here. That's, oh God, oh Jesus Christ, it hit me in the bollocks. <laughs> this is so hard. I wonder how long this would take like a real mechanic to do. Oh Jesus, it won't, it won't go in all the way. Don't even try it. Okay. <laughs> Doing everything you wanted. Why? Why won't you go on though? Oh my god! Guys, just not doing anything. Okay. There's no lip on this one though. So why aren't you going on? Okay. Unrest. Now, I think I know why it's not just sliding over, but I don't want to say. Uh, I think it's because the power steering pump is too big, because it should have a smaller one. But it's going to be too tight, isn't it? When it's on there, it's going to be too tight. Oh no, it's on. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on. Oh, just, please. Okay. I mean, yeah. That looks on, doesn't it? Hopefully it stays on whatever this thing is. I should probably try and slide it over a touch more. Don't forget to plug this thing in, whatever it is. This useless thing. Plug that back in. That's definitely going to wear a hole. Okay. Uh, so now bolt all this stuff back together. Remember to try and find a nut for the back of that as well. Let's try and get this in. There you go, that was easier than taking it out. Things go back together so much easier than they come apart. I should have put the pipe on there first. Whew. That was tough. Okay. Let's get you up in here and see the finished product. So the belt's all on my serpentiny belt. 
Uh, this thing is bolted back up, this pipe. This pipe's bolted back up. This pipe's been redone with some new pipe and it's solid, doesn't move. Fantastic. Everything's been tie wrapped in place, which is industry standard. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just having a little look round at everything else while I'm under here. Have a quick inspection, make sure everything else is good. Like that bolt looks loose there, which is probably great. And then let's lower her down and start throwing her back together. Um, there's a lot of oil leaking down there. That's interesting, isn't it? I wonder what that's from. So I've concluded that this oil here is sesame seed oil. No, this is oil that you don't need, so that's fine. I think you need the oil over here. I don't think you need it here. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so the car's back on the deck. So everything looks great from up here. It's time to start putting all the bits and bobs back. Uh, well, hopefully in the right places, but at this point, who knows? I have managed to diagnose the oil leak uh, a bit more professionally up here. Um, it's actually coming from the power steering fluid. And the reason is, is because that um, was actually sort of bent over and was leaking out the side. Um, while I was doing the brake thing. So, it's all okay. <whistles> Thank God for that. Batteries don't last long on GoPros, do they? It's all. What should we start with first? I know, radiators. So I've got to secure these to make sure they don't flap around. And everything got kind of messed up. Um, so, this is going to be a bit of a struggle. And I say everything kind of got messed up because all the radiator uh, air conditioning sorry, pipes had all sorts of connections on them, which were in turn holding other things together. And now, you know, I don't know if I'm ever going to see them again. So, uh, uh, gloves is the first thing. Wondering why I've got a crowbar in my hand. <laughs> uh, it's because um, I'm a mechanic. And it's also because the, uh, I had to do a little bit of bending whoops, to uh, get something in. So I'm just bending it back and I'm putting it all back together. Don't worry, industry standard. Promise. What could these possibly be for? Oh, no. uh, I could put those away before I drop them everywhere. One of these, maybe? Two of these. Can you tie up things to brake lines? I think you can, can't you? Sometimes I've seen brake lines just tie up some places. Surely you can tie up other things to brake lines. I hope so anyway, because I've just done it. But that will stop that moving around. That might give us a little bit of a rest of those. Let's do something there. What? What's that one here?
Okay, that shouldn't rattle uh, anywhere near as much as it probably would have done. It's still sturdy. This can go back in. Um, this does have pipes uh, missing and is upside down. Okay. Okay, oh god. <laughs> Why do they make the thing bigger than the hole? Smaller than the hole, and then it'll go in the hole. Nice stuff you learn when you're a baby. It's a square hole. Oh. The round plug, it might not go in. too much. Um, why does it have back clients? Why do you just use like electricity? Or something? It's really easy to do this with one hand because I can't fit the other hand in. It's my fault. Why is that my fault? I swear this car is just disintegrating before my eyes. God, I hope it, I, I need it to last one more week. <laughs> I need it to last one more week of exceptionally hard driving. So that vacuum line's going there, which no doubt is not going to work. And that one's going there. And if something goes wrong when I fire it up, I'll know, won't I, that these are the wrong way around. That's in, that's in, that's in, that's done there, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Should that be like that? Uh, uh, drink. Now this is thankfully one of those jobs that isn't, you know, a complete and utter nightmare. You've just got two screws and a couple of clips. Oh! This is tiring. Okay. I hope this works viewers, I really do. This whole power steering debacle that led us to stripping this thing down again and getting it ready. Oh yeah, I've got to put something in these. Well, I need to bolt that on. Uh, do I? Yeah, I probably do. Okay, I'll do that now. Right, come on baby. Start up. You know you want him. I feel there may be a backline issue. So potentially a backline is in the wrong place like we thought might be the case before or I unplugged something and I haven't plugged it back in. Is that plugged in? Should you be there? Yeah, that's plugged in. Are you, are you having a nice time? No? Okay. Ah, I think that's falling out. Ah. This machine here, which I've got no clue what it does, was not in the inlet manifold properly. Maybe that was the issue. Aha! Big Steve!
I just want to check, I can hear a little noise down where the auxiliary belt is. I just want to check, but I think it's just the belt finding its shape. No engine management like stuff like that. It sounds brilliant. Let's get you involved. So we're now back together. Everything's running dead nice down there. Um, all the levels are good. Um, and you can see a bit, I don't know if you can see the smoke coming off there, but that's all that power steering fluid that um, went down. So I'm gonna re-jig that. Um, pretty happy so far. I'm just gonna get it off the ramp now, I think. The good news is, I think, I mean, it wasn't finger light, but I'm sure it, um, it was lighter than it was before, that the steering is working, but I'm not gonna know until I'm on the road. Annoyingly though, it doesn't have any brakes, which I know doesn't, they do need bleeding. However, if you can see here, it's a bit dark, I know, but there's a pipe on the right hand side there that is weeping. Ah, oh, so I'm just going to try and do what I can to tighten that up and uh, yeah, then we'll go again. Okay, the plot thickens. Now, that pipe on the right hand side, if you can see, there's two pipes there attached to this ABS unit at the back. The one on the right is now just spinning um, on the spanner so it's it, the, the bolts rounded so there's, I can't get anything else on it there's just no room in here to get like a set of moleys on it or anything so I'm gonna cut it off and then make the brake line but thankfully it's only the brake line to this wheel so it's not the worst job in the world in terms of a brake line but what a pain in the arse still Ah, this is what we do, isn't it, for cars? So, let's crack on. Whew, okay, so this is the offending article. And I don't know if you can see properly there, but yeah, it's pretty trashed. Um, I think what's happened is it hasn't been able to go all the way home because a bit of the top bit sort of there has been deformed so it hasn't been able to go all the way home because the actual dome itself looks pretty clean you know it doesn't look like there's any issues but here's something i made years ago and this is a plug because apparently well at the moment there's 60 quids worth of castrol react sfr racing very very high temperature brake fluid running onto the floor so i'm just going to fit this as quick as i can just to stop that flow Okay, so the stopper's in, you can see there. I just wanted to give you a, another reason for this stopper. Not just about the brakes leaking, but it's also about, you can feel now, make sure it's dry and make sure nothing's leaking. And the reason you're doing that, after you've tightened that stopper up, is to make sure that it's not the threads inside the ABS pump that have gone and it's the threads inside the brake pipe so there you go now to make a brake pipe what a sorry sight but thankfully not too much brake fluid has leaked out and the pipe is this one here which goes up into this flexi which is cool so another top tip for you you know i could fuck about getting that off with a you know proper thing but again i'm just going to snip that off there Try not to snip this thing off here and then put a socket on it, pull that out, which will give us the best chance. But first, I'm going to give it a good spray of this. I don't know what the best thing about this job is, you know. Is it that it's... Um, that's a bit dirty. Uh, is it that it's really hard or is it that it takes so long to do? Um, or is it that it's really messy? Or is it that it can be quite painful? Um, I don't know what the don't know what the best bit about it is. Um, 
And this is why, like, when you go places, and you go to, like, garages and stuff, and you ask them for a price to fix your car, and they go, oh, yeah, well, uh, it's going to be X amount, and you go, wow, much? It's because it's a nightmare. Everything you do is a nightmare. Got this machine here. To be honest, I don't know what any of it does. Um, I mean, it's... I think you put brake pipe in it or something. Now, that's the old brake pipe. So I've got to try and make something that roughly follows this sort of size and shape. That's one of the fittings, and let's get the other fitting. And that's the other end. So I'll come back a bit here, so hopefully you can see these. Now, it's not terribly obvious, but both of these fittings are the same fitting. So that's good, we don't need to mess about, and they're both domed. So this bit of the brake pipe is dome shaped and that helps it seat so that's what we've got to make so now I've got to find two of these fittings so I think it's these two here so I'm just going to go and whiz one in one of the brake lines and see if that fits so I've confirmed those brake fittings do fit, fit in the fittings so now I need the right pipe this feels nice and snug, so we'll go ahead and use this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to put this machine in here. Uh, how does it work? Yeah, like that. Okay. So this goes in your vise, and then this handle thing screws into where the handle thing goes. And that then is out of your way. Great. It's like Blue Peter, this, isn't it? Uh, okay, so... We need to find out how long this is and a fairly unscientific way of doing it. You just go... Sorry about that, the uh, battery died. So yeah, get this like stringy thing which we're going to use to measure how long this brake pipe is and you just kind of work your way along it so that was that long it's really not a particularly scientific method this and it is very much prone to things going terribly wrong but you know this isn't a customer's car i'm working on here remember this is my car so i'm not too bothered about how things look, you know, or is it going to be factory standard, you know, all this sort of stuff. I'm just not that bothered. So that's where we need to, this much. So we've just got to measure that out from here now. And you just do that by following it round. You know, that's quite an interesting... Uh, thing that people say is that you should never buy a car from a mechanic because mechanics know the uh, least amount of stuff that that car needs to be on the road you know and then you get this machine put it in there tighten this thing up And then you run that round as you're tightening it, and that gives you a really nice clean cut, which is very important. Important on brake lines. Because if you get scabby bits, then they won't uh, thread in properly and bad, bad things will happen. So that's done. You can get rid of that now. Okay, that's kind of what that is, you know. Just one shaped in one way and one isn't. Uh, this little thing on the end, fairly important as well. If I can get it out. Ah, ah come on. 
it's like a little sort of deburring tool for inside basically you just take off that you just pop it in there and just give it a quick spin round and it just takes off any uh, I don't know if you can see any bits that you don't want you know so do that with both ends deburr it fabulous done okay and now you put your fittings on make sure you do that because if you forget later on then it's going to suck to be you so they're on there fantastic uh, and then you start sort of bending it now i've got a couple of little machines for bending so i'm going to show you them yeah here they are i'm only joking here they are so this is one of the tools this is the other tool they're doing for different sort of radiuses and things and uh, i'll show you how they work shortly but you can see here this one's got curves and it's got a place to hold it so that's fantastic but before we get into bending it we're just going to straighten these out a touch i do actually have a machine for straightening as well if i can find that where's that gone around oh sorry where's that gone Hello? Hello? Where are you? Uh, here it is. This straightens the pipe. So put the pipe in and feed it through and comes out straight. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Do that on the other side as well. And the reason I'm doing this is I know we don't want them straight, but it's going to help for when we put the little bell on the end, you know. There you go, I've done that. So that is now, you know, it's straighter than it was come on right now you've got to find out which one of these blocks gives you the little bell shape um and then which dial on here does as well so let me show you what i mean now inside here you can see there's a few different styles and shapes like that one there that's flat and that one there is domed, so that's probably the one that we're going to use. And on the machine itself, it has these little wheels that have different shapes on there. So you basically match that up to what you had before Robert's your mother's brother. Okay, so I did this one off camera just because I wanted to make sure that I had the right fittings in there. Uh, again, I don't know how good this sort of uh, GoPro is, but you can see a nice dome on that now. And then when the Union slides over the end, you can see that it's in real nice flush fitting on that and that's going to work a treat now when you're setting the brake pipe in the little clampy thing i try and do it i don't know if you can see again so it's kind of flush with that and that gives you enough material to squash down so pop that into the gap get your uh, device and that makes sure it's a very so solid, tight fit. And then I'll bring you over here for this. And then you dial your one that you want in, which we're using this 3 16th fitting here. And you can see where it's going to mate <laughs> with the uh, pipe. 
and then you get your handle and you pull it get it nice and tight and then there you go now let's pull it out and see what it looks like now as you can see million times better real nice dome action on that let's just check nice and flat on the bottom so that is a brake pipe that's ready to go happy days okay so a little bit squiggledy there look i don't i'm not sure what happened there but i think you know it's pretty good it's in it's done it's sorted it's in its bung so i'm going to monitor that for leaks once i've started it up and stuck on the pedal and then we'll get it all bled up again and i'll just show you the top and that's the top there all in and yeah give it a nice dry off bit of brake cleaner and then we'll see if it still leaks okay we're back at it I've got my easy bleed all connected up to the brake thing where you put like the water for the brakes and then I've checked again for leaks and you know so far so good so I'm gonna bleed the brakes up now and then hopefully we get a nice little pedal So this seems like a good place to end the first episode. The car's back together. It's running really well. Adding that extra little piece of minute pipe seems to have given the immediate throttle response uh, a real boost. So I was enjoying that. Every time I put my foot down on the on the concrete out there, it was just wheel spin, wheel spin, wheel spin. Um, great. So yeah. Uh, I need to bleed the brakes one more time, I think. A pedal could be harder. Um, and there's, where I dropped all the power steering fluid, there's a bit of sort of fog of some description. I'm not sure what kind of smoke it is coming up. So I need to make sure that goes. So I'm just gonna give that a proper drive and just make sure that's going. Cause I don't want it to be a rocker cover gasket, which it kind of looks like it might be. So fingers crossed it isn't. Um, and yeah, everything else seems to work. Obviously didn't install the AC and everything seems perfect on that. So it's had an AC delete, extra ho That's probably why it's wheel spinning actually, yeah. Extra horsepower from that happened to spin the AC motor. Uh, interesting. So yeah, I might, I might leave it like that, who needs AC? So yeah, really excited to get going. I've got six days left now until I leave for Germany. So I'm going to do a few bits on it um, and then give it a real good valet and uh, yeah, exciting times. I'll see you in the next episode and please, whatever you do, give us a like and a subscribe um, and you'll be, and if you click the notifications, you'll be the first one to know when the next episodes are up and they're going to be super cool and interesting, I hope. See you next time.